guys, welcome to another weekly vlog. Friday is my birthday, so I kind of just wanted to vlog from Sunday to Sunday, because why not? So as you can see, the previous clips, we did a little trip to Canberra to go to Ikea to pick up these gorgeous bookshelves. So we set them up, as you can see in the clip, and I will be organizing them and I will be filming that and putting it in this vlog as well, so you can see hopefully it works out well because i don't know if they're all gonna fit i don't really know exactly how i'm gonna organize them exactly i think i'm still gonna do it by color again but again not sure so that you'll find that out later in the vlog but it sort of started off i wanted to do an unboxing because i've been waiting to share these packages with you i did a little book shopping on um, Booktopia and I bought five books so I wanted to show you guys those. I was waiting for the fifth book because for some reason even though it said it ships between like one and two days they still did it separately. I don't know why but we're going to be looking at the books that I got on Booktopia because I haven't really bought many books. Like I've been buying random books occasionally but I haven't really done like a decent little bookshop on Booktopia. So this was the first book order in our new house. I'm very excited to show you guys what I got. So we'll start with that. So the first book that I got was Before the Coffee Gets Cold by Toshikazu Kawaguchi. I apologize if I'm butchering that name. But I saw this on Spoopy Hole's channel. She did this as part of her Read the World vlog where she reads books from different countries. And this one was for the Japanese vlog so this sounds fantastic from what i know it is about a cafe where the customers who go there can have the chance to travel back in time that's all i know it's quite short she enjoyed it she recommended it so i wanted to get it and see what it's all about because it just sounds really interesting and quite unique so i'm looking forward to reading that one the next one is one that has been quite popular and sort of circulated a bit on booktube and bookstagram and that is this is how you lose the time war by amal l mota and max gladstone again i don't know too much about this one except that people seem to either love it or hate it what i know is that it's kind of done in letters between two rival agents and it's set in the future <laughs> and there's a romance or like chemistry between the two of them. That's all I really know. And also that it's kind of poetic in a way, which I know I'm going to love. I haven't actually flicked through and had a look, but by the sounds of it, it sounds like something that I would enjoy. I really enjoyed things like the night circus and the art of taxidermy. The way that they're written is like a really beautiful, writing style and I'm hoping that it's something like that. The next one I got is another popular one of course and that is Get Alive Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. This is apparently fantastic and it sounds so good. Um, I believe she's chronically ill and she does like a, a, a list of things to do to get her out of her comfort zone and to actually do things that she wouldn't normally want to do and obviously there's a romance. But um, yeah, she does like a get a life list. So I think that sounds like something I would enjoy. I'm really loving all these contemporary style reads and everyone who I've seen read this has actually said how good it is. And I really want to read this and get the other two because I think they just sound fantastic. The next one that I got, I wasn't actually going to get originally because it didn't sound like something that I would enjoy and it's again another very very hyped up book on booktube and bookstagram and that is House of Hollow by Crystal Sutherland. I only got this because my lovely friend Ashley read it and said how amazing it was and we have very very similar taste in books so naturally I was like you know what if she recommends this so much I'm gonna put it on that list of books to buy and I think this is gonna be a really good read for like a very cold wintry day where I can cozy up on my chair over there and with a blanket and a cuppa and just get all comfy and read a creepy book. 
So I don't read a lot of creepy books. I don't read a lot of like horror or thrillers, but they're definitely something that I want to read more of and get out of my comfort zone with. So I'm hoping that this is as good as everybody has said. Okay, and the fifth book that I got in this order, I haven't actually opened yet. The other ones I opened because I needed to see if it was just the four of them or if it was all of them and they just like sent two emails, but it was just the four of them. And then I got this one today. So I'm going to open it and show you what this one is. I suck at opening boxes. Look at that, look at that. I'm just terrible. <laughs> well, I got it. So this one is The Castle of Tangled Magic by Sophie Anderson. I've been wanting to get this one for ages. This is the third one in the series following The House with Chicken Legs and The Girl Who Speaks Bear. Really absolutely loved The House with Chicken Legs. That was it's one of my favorite middle grades now. The Girl Who Speaks Bear was good, not my favorite, but I think this one is just going to be fantastic like the other two. Um, I don't really know much. Like it's set in the same world as the other two, of course, um, but I don't really know much about what this one is about. Uh, it just says that she's destined to save this land and there's like a scheming wizard and I don't know, but I'm looking forward to reading it because I love Sophie's writing. It's just really fun and magical and I always enjoy it. <laughs> so that's my book unboxing. The next one that I wanted to show you is another one I got today. I'm very, very, very excited. I don't know if you can guess what this is, but massive Taylor Swift fan over here, as you will probably know because I don't shut up about her. <laughs> but I may have ordered a... Where's my, where's my knife? That worked. All right. I collect records and I've been really wanting to collect all the Taylor Swift ones. So this one is honestly one of my favorite ones of hers now. So I'm sort of like gradually getting a collection of her records. Now I did this as a click and collect originally, but they didn't have it in stock. The one that they had left was on hold for a customer. So they ended up just getting it from the warehouse and they got it sent to me. And if you can't already tell, which is my new favorite album of hers. It's Evermore and I am so excited. I love this album so much. I have nonstop been listening to Folklore and Evermore. There's a playlist on Spotify called Folk Folklore Evermore and it just, it's just what I need. <laughs> I, I love these two albums. So the albums of hers I currently have are 1989 and Folklore and I'm just gradually getting them part of my collection. So. It's only been a recent thing, that's why this is only the third one. But I'm so excited to have this. I freaking love this album. I honestly, I think my favorite song of this album is Evermore, which is the one she does with Bon Iver. But there's really not a song that I would skip. I love them all. Dorothea is probably my least favorite. Same with Nobody No Crime. I mean, I like Nobody No Crime, but it's one that I usually will skip because I've listened to it a lot already. Um, but all the other ones are honestly just, I love them. I love these songs so much. I love these albums. So Evermore is the sister album to Folklore. So it's essentially like a two part series with the albums. <sighs> I love it and I can't wait to listen to it. <laughs>
Tuesday evening. It's about 11 o'clock ish. I'm about to head to bed soon because I am just exhausted. Today has been really long and it has turned out very different to what I had hoped it would be. So I had planned to do another unboxing thing because I had another parcel delivered this morning and when I got home from work I was going to unbox it because it was a parcel from Read and Relax and it came with like a blind date with a book and a bath bomb so nothing too crazy but just nice and simple but I uh, had a notification on my phone because we have a doorbell that has a camera and it lets you know when there's motion detected so I had motion detected at like three o'clock this afternoon which I thought was odd anyway I was going to go and check my car in the car park at this time and I was having a look and uh, someone ran off with my parcel they walked right up to the front step and just took the package and just ran off and they were clever enough to hide their face knowing that we had a camera absolutely ridiculous and sickening and just like it doesn't bother me that they stole like like it doesn't mean it doesn't bother me about the parcel that they stole like easily replaced but it's more so the fact that they were game enough to do that and that scares me <sighs> i don't understand what makes people want to do this but yeah if you follow me on instagram you would have seen this up in my story um anyway the clips of the dude or chick or whoever it was that ran off with my package but yeah great start to my birthday week but I'm trying to ignore it get past it and just remember not to leave my parcels in view of the street anymore because that's just asking for trouble I think at this moment <laughs> but anyway um reading wise let's change the subject from something less depressing and frightening <laughs> Um, reading wise, I finished The Quiet at the End of the World by Lauren James last night. I loved this. I gave this one four stars. I really, really enjoyed it. It was definitely different to what I had expected. I don't know really what I expected, but basically this is about a virus that goes global and everybody is infected at the exact same time and they all get bleeding noses at the exact same time they all think they're dying like it's a very scary thing and then it turns out after this epidemic of bleeding noses that everyone is infertile and this virus has caused global infertility so humanity was sort of dealing with the aftermath of what that's like when nobody can have children and like schools closing down um riots as per usual people going crazy that sort of thing and um people just trying to deal with this so we're seeing flashbacks to um a girl called maya who we're seeing like through emails and like her social media um from our main character Larry's point of view so we're following Larry and Shen quite a few years later when there's only about 300 human beings alive and they all live in a cluster in London so Larry and Shen are the two youngest people living on earth at the moment and they're basically trying to come to terms with the fact that they are the last people and that they need to leave a mark on the world but trying to work out how they do that and just trying to deal with, you know, having a completely different life to the lives of the ones they watch through, like, saved files and saved social media. So, so they've accessed the woman Maya and they're seeing her life through social media and how she dealt with the global infertility crisis and, like, what happened after that. So it was really, really very interesting. And I don't want to say too much more because there's a lot of twists and turns I did not expect. I was constantly on edge, constantly, like, thinking and wondering what was going to happen next, trying to predict things, but it was just crazy. And it was also very existential too, but I think it was done really, really well. I think I did like this better than The Loneliest Girl in the is it the loneliest girl in the universe i think it is yeah that's the first one anyway so i think i liked it better than loneliest girl in the universe really really enjoyed it it was definitely a good read but the one i've just started because i just had a bath not too long ago but the one i have just started is my pride and prejudice manga 
I am due for another reread of Pride and Prejudice because I like rereading Pride and Prejudice and I thought why not make it a tradition to reread Pride and Prejudice around my birthday. So as my birthday is on Friday I'm going to be rereading Pride and Prejudice in manga form. So, so far I'm not very far. I'm only on chapter 2 which is like, I think it's almost 40, 38, 39, 40. Okay so it's like page 41. So I've already read 41 pages of this. And I'm really loving the illustrations. I think it's a lot of fun. It's definitely a different adaptation for Pride and Prejudice. I'm looking forward to reading some more. I don't know if I'll read any more tonight because I'm actually quite tired. But I'll definitely be reading more tomorrow because I have a late start on Thursday. So I think I should be able to read more on Wednesday night. But yeah, that is my reading progress. I'm also planning on starting the 10,000 Doors of January at some stage too. But at the moment, my concentration is only really working on one book right now, so we're going to see how I go. But for now, I'm tired. I think I'm going to go to bed. I also had planned on continuing my bookshelves because, as you can see, they're still quite bare. But, yeah, it's been a very um, crazy afternoon. Hello, everyone. It is Thursday, and I am on the night shift for work tonight, so I'm doing like 12.45 to quarter past seven. So we close at seven tonight. Um, and then tomorrow is my birthday. I'm very excited for that. Not excited for the shift today, but hopefully it'll be busy and it'll fly by because it's raining. But um, where is my book? <laughs> Update. I have been reading some more of the Pride and Prejudice manga. I am about almost halfway through. I think I'm up to like 215 or something like that. 214. And I'm really, really enjoying this. I. I love the illustrations and like the adap the adaptation of the actual novel because it's obviously written to be kind of oh yeah it's kind of written to be a little bit more modern um, but still keeping the same style but making it a little bit easier for people to understand if classics are harder to um, grasp the concept of and the writing style of classics can be very, very confusing and difficult to understand. Believe me, I know. <laughs> but yeah, really enjoying this. The illustrations are awesome. It's just a lot of fun and I'm, I'm smashing through this, I think. So that's my reading update. I do want to start the 10,000 Doors of January soon. I'm hoping I can read some more of Pride and Prejudice tonight and maybe start 10,000 Doors of January tomorrow. I don't know, we'll see how I go because tomorrow I just have plans to be kind of lazy like I want to watch some Disney movies and eat some good food and maybe do my bookshelves we'll we'll see but I have tomorrow off so I'm very excited for that what I've been meaning to show you guys is a nice little bookmark that I bought myself from Bliss and Joy over on Instagram she makes some gorgeous bookmarks and she's only just opened her business so I bought a bookmark to add to my ever-growing bookmark collection but this one here is the book thief inspired and i think it is just beautiful very simple but beautiful and that's what i like in bookmarks um so it says i watched the sky as it turned from silver to gray to the color of rain even the clouds tried to look the other way i love the book thief it's one of my favorite books and i think this is perfect to finally have a book thief bookmark but yes so it's raining today i'm about to go and reheat some pizza to have for lunch and i'm gonna watch some Simpsons before I have to actually get ready for work so hopefully today we'll go fast. <laughs> Hello everyone it is Thursday night and I thought I would come on here with a reading update because I just finished Pride and Prejudice the manga edition and I loved this. I gave it five stars of course because it's Pride and Prejudice but the illustrations like I've said before were absolutely amazing it was just so much fun and I really really enjoyed it and I definitely think I'm going to make a little tradition out of it every year to read Pride and Prejudice around my birthday whether it's like manga, graphic novel, audiobook or just like the classic Pride and Prejudice or even just watching it as long as I involve Pride and Prejudice in my birthday month yeah I think that's that's a good tradition to have but I really I loved this it was fun it was romantic it was dramatic and that's just everything that I had expected from this manga edition it is my birthday in about half an hour but I think I'm going to head to bed because I'm quite sleepy and at least if I get up at a decent hour I can have a big 
fulfilling day, even though my day is pretty much going to be me lazing around watching Disney movies, possibly going to be continuing to bring books up from the shed, but I do plan on relaxing and being lazy. So we will see how tomorrow goes. I really hope that it's raining because it has been raining all day. So I hope that tomorrow it'll be raining again like it has been today because it just makes it so much more cozier. Good morning everyone. It is my birthday. <laughs> it is currently 11 o'clock and I'm just about to sit down and get started on my first Disney movie of the day, which I'm going to watch Pocahontas. So I'm looking forward to having a very chill day. <laughs> Hello guys, I'm still in the same exact spot that I was like almost two hours ago. <laughs> so I had a visit from Jackie, she came over and dropped off some cinnamon scrolls which are delicious. And uh, I had intended to go out into the shed to get some more boxes of books to start doing more of my bookshelves. But <laughs> I feel like such a five year old, but I hate spiders. So we found a dead like giant huntsman thing i'm pretty sure it was a huntsman i'm hoping it was a huntsman spider and it was dead and it was outside of the garage door and it's like still there like it's still dead there like obviously because it hasn't moved um but so that sort of like scared me before when we saw it because you know i don't want to know what other spiders are in the shed and i have to like very carefully check my books as i'm moving them inside just to make sure there's no spiders on them so far I've found like three dead spiders which is always nice but um I put all these boxes on the trolley to bring up the ramp well to bring by the ramp to take them inside and uh, as I was about to push the trolley I saw this massive furry huntsman on one of the boxes and I just lost it I let go of the trolley. I pushed the book boxes off. I didn't even care what was in them. I pushed them off. I closed the garage door as much as I could. There's still a gap because I think there's something stuck there. But for the life of me, I will not be going back out there right now because I was just petrified. I'm still shaking. Like, I didn't think I was that scared of spiders. But it was massive and gross. And it just gives me the chills. And my neighbor came out and she asked me how it was going. And I was like, yeah, it's going good. Just pretending that I didn't just have like a panic attack from seeing a spider. But I, I ran back inside, got the spray to spray in and around the boxes to make sure that the spider will die because it's like a very strong outdoor spray. So I'm hoping that it'll kill the spider, even if it did get in one of the boxes of the books, like because there's a little gap um, in one of in the top box in the tape um, that I feel like it could have gone in. So... I sprayed around it and I sprayed as much as I possibly could so we need another thing of spray but I sprayed the whole thing and had to push the the, the boxes back in the shed and shut the garage door and stuff and um yep and then I ran inside and now I'm just going to sit back and relax again because I basically no I quit this week this week has been shit <laughs> I've been trying to be happy this week but things just keep happening that just have ruined my week and made me feel like shit. So it comes in threes, right? I'm hoping that's the last one, right? But I'm not going back in the shed today. I don't care that the shed is unlocked and there's a gap. I've put boxes in front of it. So hopefully if it starts to rain, the boxes will stop it out uh, the, the boxes. I put bins in front of it. So I'm hoping that if it does start to rain, that the bins will stop it and also I have the window open like I have the curtain open so I can see if anybody's walking down the driveway I can see if somebody's going down to the garage 
Oh, my car's in front of it as well, so I'm hoping that nobody can see in. But even so, I'm home. I can see shit. I just, I don't want to go back down in the shed right now. It was just terrifying. I honestly didn't think I was that scared of spiders. But I must be because shaking. Shaking and chills and ugh. No, thank you. Anyway, I'm going to sit back and watch Anastasia and have some lunch, I think. To try and relax somehow. Hello everyone, it is Saturday and if you look behind me, I'm kind of getting some progress with my bookshelves. Not a lot, I'm still gradually bringing book boxes inside, but I've gotten a considerable amount and I don't have many left, so I'm really hoping that they will fit on the shelves. That is like the thing that I'm worried about, but it should be fine. It should be fine. <laughs> but yes, it's Saturday night. My plan for tomorrow for my weekend is to continue working on my library. I have the chance to just put all my books out, finally organize them, and hopefully it works out well. Um, reading wise, I have started the 10,000 Doors of January. I'm only like 20 pages or so. I've only read a chapter tonight, but so far it's not bad. I haven't read enough to give you an idea of what it's about or for me to have an idea of like what's going on just yet but yeah i think that's all i had to update you guys on so far work was just usual work it was busy and it turns out that we are all in lockdown again so the whole of like sydney and the blue mountains and wollongong and all that are in full lockdown and starting from 6 p.m tonight we have to wear masks so in non-residential places we have to wear masks which means the next time I go to work I have to wear a mask joy but this is what happens when you get stupid people that think oh you know what just because we're in lockdown we can we can we can get out like we we don't have to we can get out before lockdown actually happens it doesn't work that way guys <laughs> you can't just be like okay cool lockdown is happening I'm going to escape to the countryside, to the regional side of New South Wales, and I'll be fine. I'll be on a holiday then. Like, no, no. The whole reason that lockdown is happening is to keep you there until they can get COVID under control. Just, I don't understand some people. Oh, and we're having another toilet paper shortage again. Just, oh, crazy people. But anyway, um, yes, my plan for tomorrow, work on this room. Hopefully I'll get it done this weekend. Hello, it is almost 5.30 on Monday night, Monday afternoon, Monday night, almost Monday night, and I am almost finished my bookshelves. I am so, so close. I still have blue, green, brown, and the rest of the black books to go, but everything else is is it is in order it's all sorted. <laughs> I have to put like all my pops and decorations and ornaments and everything up, but it's getting there. It's getting there slowly and honestly it's looking so freaking good. I'm very, very happy with it and turns out it's all fitting better than I thought it would. So yes, I will show you the finished project 
very, very soon. It's not going to take me long to finish this off, I don't think. Probably one more episode of The Golden Girls. <laughs> and then, yeah, it's done. Hey guys, it is Tuesday night and I should probably close off this vlog. <laughs> I realised that probably for the most part, like towards the end, I just sort of slacked a bit with vlogging, so apologies there, but it just ended up being a really busy end to the week just because I like... I was dead set on finishing my bookshelves and when I got in that mood I just I needed to get it done because if I was distracted by filming it I just I wasn't gonna do it but they are done minus candles and a couple more ornaments and my fairies and stuff but they are done they are done I will show you <laughs> look at these gorgeous shelves <laughs> I am actually really happy with how they've turned out but yeah I'm honestly really really chuffed with how it has turned out I am so happy with it I still haven't put the flowers up yet um but I'll get there same with like my fairies like I said but so far it has turned out really really well I'm I'm really happy with how this room is turning out to be it's just my little safe haven it's just perfect and it's small but it's it's cozy it's cute and i can't wait to put the fairy lights up as well i think with the fairy lights it's just gonna stand out even more but i'm just really happy with how it's turned out to be i'm just loving it i'm really loving it so yes i'm gonna end this vlog here thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed the footage of my shelves even though there wasn't as much as i'd hoped there would be but yeah let me know what you think of these shelves and um, I will talk to you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.